The Lo-Fi Horror Guys Growing on Your Life, Season 14, is sponsored by Toxic Coffin. Toxic Coffin is two horror-loving dudes, Lance and Steven. They make horror and Halloween goods to explode your brain. Each shirt is curated with its own experience to make you stoked on your favorite movie or time of year. Follow Toxic Coffin at Toxic underscore Coffin on social medias or at their shop at ToxicCoffin.com. Once again, at Toxic underscore coffin or at their shop at toxiccoffin.com let's see <laughs> damn how you doing man i'm doing great how are you I have, oh man i am i am absolutely great thank you so so much first and foremost for your time today uh what, what an honor i'm so excited man uh thanks so much no i'm excited to be here awesome awesome well here, let, let me tell you here on, on growing on you live basically what we do uh, I have one introduction question that we start off with, and then the remainder of the interview is about you and your craft, your career in acting, in film, different things like that. And I have one finale question that uh, we're going to wrap up on that is written just for this episode. So if you're comfy, my man, we'll get this thing uh, on a roll. Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, let me ask you, if you could host a drive-in double feature and Uncle Peckerhead were to play with any other movie of your choosing, what would be the second the, the second feature? That's a hard one. Uh, I think maybe Evil Dead Two. Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe Green Room. Uh, Ooh, okay. Yeah. yeah That's uh, a good choice. I don't know. I I would probably put it with my favorite horror comedy, which not enough people have seen, and so I would use the opportunity to to get more people to know it which is The Loved Ones. The Loved uh, Ones, I'm trying. Yeah, From so um, it's, it's uh, y you think it's kind of gonna be this fatal attraction type of uh, thing, this girl asked, the, it's Australian. It's the guy who did The Devil's Candy. You're, you're talking from the mid 2000s, right? Yeah, like a, it's a newer, it's a new. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. That was that was no. Awesome. This Scott so, the so this, on the cover. Yes. Oh my god, yes. that movie. Yes, is fucking fantastic. Um, <laughs> and every time you think you know where it's gonna go, it just gets more and more batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's movie. a good choice. I, I mean, you, you, yeah. you say in the green room, what a good movie too. You know, there's that. That's oh, the beautiful yeah. thing with with horror is that you know there's so many things out there that you think that you know a lot of stuff and then you pick up on things. Like, yeah, the loved ones. That was a really good one. I'm gonna have to revisit yeah. that actually because oh, that a was big, a big big fan of it. I think it's on Prime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Good choices. I love that. Jeez, OP. Thanks. Uh, so let's dig into a little bit as far as, you know, in your youth and in your younger days, you know, kind of what were what were some movies that kind of generated some interest in, you know, maybe even horror or not, you know, uh, uh, some some characters or actors that, you know, really drew you and resonated with you? So the big influential movies on me as a kid, and they're going to sound so weird. Um uh the birds i saw the birds when i was like six years old and Oof, uh yeah. it totally fucked me up you know and, <laughs> and, and i was probably afraid of every animal for about two years afterwards um <laughs> i have no idea why my mom let me watch that but uh it scared the like when when they show Suzanne Plachette with her eyes poked out you know like i lost my shit uh another thing uh, when i was when I was really little was Dark Shadows. So, you know, oh, yeah. I, so I grew up when Dark Shadows was on TV and it scared me so bad when the music would come, I would hear the music that intro you know, which is a very distinctive theme, you know, um, it's really over the top. I would run from the room, like, <laughs> cause I knew vampires and werewolves and all that shit was coming. And then a little bit later on, like Jaws, of course, I saw Jaws oh, when I was yeah. at a theater when I was about 12 and it was the opening weekend and the theater was packed wow. and uh, yeah, it was one of the scariest things I'd ever seen in my life. And <laughs> even, even to this day, like if I'm in the deep end of a pool underwater, like I can freak myself out. Like, even though I know <laughs> like there's no way a shark got in here, like I can still. And then the, the last one I'll say is, as a kid, 
when I when I was like maybe twelve or so, my dad and my brother went to see Marathon Man, and oh, okay. um, they thought it was too adult for me, so they sent me. It was one of the very first multiplexes in our area, so they sent me next door to watch Burnt Offerings by myself, and I don't oh, know if you've God. ever seen that. Um, yeah. It's fucked up, you know. Uh, I, I, I mean, it's it's crazy and campy, and um, but you know, at the time, like it was very serious to me. And I literally, yeah. for five years, had nightmares about that show for <laughs> for probably three or four times a week. You know, yeah. Oh my lord! Yeah, so I those mean, are you would some have probably been ones. off. You'd have probably been better off watching Marathon Man. If probably the, the two choices <laughs> yeah i could have just looked away for one one minute but and then there's that point where um oliver reed comes flying out of that window and he slams onto the window and it's just like crazy war yeah yeah wow yeah so it wow. fucked that me is, up. that is crazy <laughs> so and, and it's funny i do have to touch on this really fast just because i i've mentioned jaws is probably I, I can probably credit that to being the first scary movie that i ever had seen and when i was younger we had uh we had a neighbor behind us that had a pool in their backyard oh. and i remember specifically i don't know how old i was but i would have to i told my parents i had to have goggles because just in case there was something under the water that i wasn't seeing above i was mm -hmm. in that same situation it didn't matter yeah. if it was a pool or not that movie right. ruined water for still today. If I'm in a lake, if I'm not touching, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. If, if my feet start to leave the, if it's so deep that my feet, yeah, I, I can easily like freak myself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, I, I love that. I love that. So, and, and digging into a little bit, you know, as far as acting, different things, I started thinking about maybe even earlier opportunities before thinking of like the career aspect or the, the, you know, the actual job aspect. And I started thinking about Halloween, you know, like when we're younger, you know, that certain time that comes into when we're acting like somebody else for a day. And I wanted to ask you about, you know, as far as with, with dressing up for Halloween, you know, some earlier costumes maybe that you got from TV shows or movies and maybe even a costume that you never got to, that you never got to be, but you really always wanted to be. Right. So I, uh... You know, I didn't. I didn't dress up that much for Halloween as a kid. I, uh, we would just go and ask for candy. You know, we didn't. Yeah. We didn't <laughs> okay. um, yeah. But uh, I do remember a few. Like my mom dressed me up as a mummy when I was like five, and I just remember getting tremendous amounts of attention. Like it was pretty funny because I was <laughs> I was wrapped in ace bandages and toilet paper. And I can barely move and, you know, and then um, <laughs> okay. another time. And then the, the rest of the ones, I, I have the, a, a little bit of a funny story about my dad worked for NASA. And uh, I oh, grew up wow. in Texas and my dad worked for NASA and he was working on this project where it was called the Apollo Soyuz mission. And uh, it's when before there was a space station or anything, it was the first time like two different crafts linked up in space. So he's the flight director for that. And uh, all these cosmonauts were constantly in our house and Russian rocket scientists and stuff. And so Halloween was rolling around and I wanted to be a monster. And my dad was like, no, no, no. You have to get one of these. Back when I was a kid, they had these boxed Halloween costumes. Yeah. And it would yeah. have this like plastic mask that smelled like, garbage like and like these little, here yeah totally totally <laughs> but they were always they were mostly in a box and he wanted me to to wear one of those and i was like no i'm too cool i'm too old for that <laughs> shit but i still had to do it uh but other i did do i've done two monsters as an adult so i did king kong once um, oh, man. and I just did a gorilla suit and I walked around with a Barbie in my hand and I had one of these, <laughs> like these battery operated planes that would fly on a string. And I just like, let it fly over my head. Like, <laughs> so I did that. And uh, then, uh, I, I did carry once. Oh, so, wow. Uh, okay. How did that work so out? I, I, so 
<clears throat> I did it for a weekend. I did it two nights. It was a Halloween weekend. And I won every contest of every party I went to. Because uh, I, you know, I did it kind of halfway. Like, I just threw on a blonde wig and some, like, goodwill prom dress. And then just covered myself in red paint. I mean, just, like, <laughs> covered. <laughs> and uh, I still had the beard. It, so it was pretty funny. Um <laughs> Yeah, it was, so those are the those are the movie inspired uh, Halloween costumes that I've done. Oh my lord, that is awesome! I mean, with the carry one, did, did you get did you get red paint all over the place, or was it pretty? Oh, contained? everywhere! Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looked <laughs> like it. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It was like in all in the hair in my legs, and yeah, it was a mess. Oh man, they're like, you, you win the contest, but can you please clean this shit up? <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my man, roommate that... at the time was not happy about a whole weekend of that because it was everywhere. <laughs> oh my god, uh, that is that is great. I mean, and, and good answers too. That that's that's awesome. I mean, it, it's that was kind of the first thing I was wondering was if you had the beard at the time too, and but that makes it that much more fun, you know. It's just kind of yeah, hey, yeah, I went for it, and you're gonna like it if if you do, if you don't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, beautiful. Now, so uh, another aspect with horror, uh, you know, kind of as we're going on, and you've mentioned some things as far as with the sharks and pools and things, but uh, it has a way of introducing, you know, things that you might not ordinarily be scared of, you know, as far as the water and dowels. And uh, we'll even say the Easter Bunny. There's a picture of you. I wanted to dig into a little <laughs> bit on your Instagram here. You're sitting with the Easter Bunny. I, I wanted to dig into that. What was the story behind that? You know, it, I, I was just, I was staying with my parents and I was at this uh, outdoor uh, shopping center that they have uh, over by them. And the guy was just sitting there alone by himself and I felt kind of bad for him because it was like Monday at two in the afternoon or something like that. And it was hot and I just like felt bad for the guy and I just thought, you know what, let me, let me do a picture with him and I'll just like <laughs> make, the, make the angriest face I possibly can, you know? So, uh, yeah, I just did it as a joke. Um, <laughs> but in terms of stuff being scary that wouldn't normally be scary, um, yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like you, like I said, the, the, you know, I've seen so many messed up things in mm -hmm. horror movies, but still sometimes the, the thing that's simple can be the scariest, like you say, like a doll or the water, um, like that chauffeur. I mean, that really messed me up for a long time. Sure. Um, sure. So, yeah, I'm trying. I think less than being like scared of objects, like more of maybe noises or music. Like, like, I think I saw enough horror movies as a kid. Like, whenever I heard a music box. Like, I would immediately, like, because, I mean, that is always a harbinger of something badass about yeah. to happen, you know? Yeah. Uh, so things like that would tense me up. <laughs> or, like, a creak, like a creaking door or, like, something like that, other than, like, objects or, you know, I don't know yeah. if that makes yeah. sense. No, totally. Absolutely. I think that's, you know, and it's something too, along with, I guess, once again, going back to, you know, Jaws with the score being just as yeah. much a character or a villain as any character yeah. or the shark is in the movie. You know, I mean, that's, that's certainly something that I, I touch on a lot of times with movies too. And I think it was cool, you know, even with Uncle Peck Peckerhead, where it was a little bit of a different approach with the punk music and kind of the, you know, the pummeling, but it was also, you know, a, a different, different aspect as far as, uh, you know, maybe another movie not having the same exact, because right now, like, they're kind of, some movies are having, you know, the, the, the 80s kind of synthy, you know, sound, and yeah, I think that yeah, was one thing that was really lot. cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot more raw. I mean, the, the whole thing, <clears throat> the whole thing has kind of a DIY feel to it, Yeah. and uh, when we were making it, like, it had a very DIY feel to it, you know. <laughs> uh, so much of what we were go going through on set and and trying to put out fires and things like that was reflected, like, in the script. Kind of like everything, I mean, not everything that can go wrong does go wrong. But definitely, like, even our shooting schedule, like, when we would move from city to city because we shot in uh, 
in New Jersey, uh, all over New Jersey. We shot in Philly for a couple of days. We shot in Brooklyn uh, a few days. And, and when we moved around, it would be Jeff Riddle, uh, usually driving, because um, it was his van. It was actually his van that um, we used in the oh, movie. Oh, okay. And Ruby McAllister, who plays Mel, and Chet Siegel, who plays Judy. Uh, we would travel together. So it was, you know, it was very much like what you see in the movie, like people fight oh, okay. music and stuff like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That rawness that you see in the movie was also happening behind the scenes, but in a great like vital way you know right okay okay yeah. yeah and and as far as 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 far as you know kind of bringing that too i know uh, i had listened to you know some interviews and things and matt mentioning you know working with trauma uh you know for some years and that was kind of right. something too where it wasn't something i think and and, and credited to you know trauma or people that kind of get to experience that but it wasn't something where you know something that is a low budget can obviously go very wrong but then there's other things where it's like you have a script that's very solid. You have characters that are memorable. You have, there was a lot going for it that, you know, you don't have to have a multi-million dollar budget to make it successful, I, you know, and I- I think I you're right. It. I think like if, you know, if it had been a $50 million movie, like I think it probably would have lost some of its charm. Mm -hmm. Like if it had been too slick, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. That's, I, that's I, my opinion. Completely agree. And, you know, you mentioned Evil Dead 2, you know, that's one of the things that, bottom of the line budget that could have had but you know i mean look at the look at the admiration that it still has today <laughs> please i mean just just that shot where you're going through you know the the forest um and they were just like winging that shit you know they were like well <laughs> yeah. i wonder yeah. what this will look like and then it's in every yeah. horror movie for the you know ever made yeah. after yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I wanted to mention on specific scenes as far as with your interests as you were growing up, three scenes that, uh, you know, have just been forever ingrained in your brain, whether they were terrifying or shocking, maybe even disgusting. Uh, what are what are three scenes in horror movies that forever stick out to you? I mean, I mean, there's so many. Uh But but not that many from my childhood. I, I one I do. I mean the so I saw Alien in theaters when it first came out. Like the I was around twelve when Halloween came out, and that's when I really started to get an interest. And but I could never see it, and so it was all about people telling me well, what happens. What happens? You know, <laughs> I before I was old enough to go to our movies, I just like would force people to go, give me a blow by blow of like I remember <laughs> making my brother do that uh for me for Tales of the Crypt and he's telling me oh. about like Peter Cushing going down the aisle or um not Peter Cushing but they Peter Cushing was a blind guy but you remember yeah. the story where it's the razor blades in the aisle and the, they yeah. make the dog chase its owner anyway so yeah. he would I would just like <laughs> give me more detail give me more detail um so when I was finally able to start to see them myself, one of the first ones, you know, again, was Jaws, then uh, Alien. And, and mm -hmm. to see Alien in a theater with no real knowledge of what was happening, that chest burst was just <laughs> kind of mind-blowing, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then some some others. I re I remember <coughs> when I was a freshman in high school uh, is when Friday the Thirteenth came out, the first one. And there's that uh, murder of the chick in the bathroom where the axe is just like right in her face, and I had never seen anything <laughs> like that graphic. And I remember even afterwards, it, like it shook me, and I was like. Maybe I don't need to see horror movies. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is like robbing me of a little of my humanity, you know. And I just kind of cooled. I cooled it for two weeks, and then I was like, "Nah, let's let's see something scary again." Yeah. Uh, yeah. Others, others would be like uh, audition. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, that's something much later. Um, yeah. What else? Basically, all of martyrs or you know 
Um, there's there's a scene in High Tension where the killing first starts and something, I can't remember what it is that happens to a hand, like a hand just gets split or something. And it's the it's kind of the first graphic thing that you see and it is really intense. I yeah, still I still remember that. Yeah, it's been a while since uh, I've seen so that yeah. one. Yeah, that was really that's a really good one though. I I would have to go back. Yeah. That was kind of like with that French uh uh yeah, yeah. drive that there was lots of real extreme stuff coming over from France. Yeah, like Inside, which I loved. Yes. I loved that movie. Yes. The original, <laughs> not the remake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Same with Yeah, Martyrs, that movie's yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I need to revisit. There's one called Calvert that I really want to revisit. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I remember uh, that one too. Did I you just, ever see Frontiers? I, uh, yeah, yeah. Frontiers is great. Uh, Frontiers feels to be kind of like a French Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, oh yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, but Calvert is so weird, and I love that the guy. Um is an entertainer for like senior citizen centers because it's, it's just like <laughs> kind of the world's stupidest job and he just kind of deserves <laughs> whatever he gets you know right <laughs> right <laughs> yeah you're like I, most times i feel bad but not this time <laughs> yeah not for this guy if he really if that's his passion let him have it <laughs> Oh my lord! All right, so, so as far as kind of going from your interest to breaking into to you know acting and 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 you know doing something yourself, working in film, uh, I know that you've mentioned early on in your in your acting journey uh, taking part in community theater. Uh, you know, I wanted you to take us back to your first or earlier performances. You know, and you know maybe the roles that you played and how you prepped for uh, for these performances. So I, I I've had kind of an interesting you know, I'm not going to say journey because that's so douchey. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, so I, I, I did my first ever play when I was in eighth grade in Texas. It was a community theater thing. It was Oliver the Musical. Oh. Um, and it was fun. And it started me, you know, all through high school and into college, you know, doing acting. No, thank you. Like, I, I was not great at uh, marketing myself. Okay. I loved going on auditions, but I just hate, hated the headshots and all of, all of that networking and all of the bullshit. So mm -hmm. uh, I did a couple of things, but after about six months of being in New York, I was like, nope. And I became a graphic designer and I was a graphic designer for 30 years. Um, no acting. And then about five years ago, I thought, what would it be like to, to revisit that, you know? And so I did, uh, I did another community theater thing and it was uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And I just played this guy oh. who had like a Christ complex and I'm up against the wall, like on the cross. And, <clears throat> and all I would say is, um, oh, something like fuck that or uh i can't remember what it was <laughs> but it was just like fuck this or fuck that rah, 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 and it was the, <laughs> i just said it over and over and over and it was it was so much fun you know yeah uh and so i just started uh yeah trying to to get more and more work and then i got lucky with some theater stuff and then i did a bunch of shorts and then uh uh, Uncle Peckerhead was the first feature, well, the second feature that I did. Uh, nothing ever happened with the first feature. Um, but this, the second feature that I did... Uh... Let's see, it, it just cut out a second, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just saying, uh, uh, and Uncle, uh, Uncle Peckerhead was the second feature that I did. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. What, so in, in your early, like when you're starting out here, were there roles or actors, uh, maybe but even actresses uh, that, you know, were really inspiring to you and 
maybe even sometimes yeah. when you were looking for inspiration, you kind of would look at totally maybe totally. their approach. They're, yeah, so I'm I'm a huge fan of you know both actors and actresses because it's the same you know the same process, right? Um, yeah. So Ian Holm, I think, is the greatest character actor ever. Wow. So okay. he was in The Hobbit, I think. Um, but he was, he's been in a million movies, and uh, he was the android in Alien. Um, oh wow! Okay. In the first day, in the first Alien. But he's been. That's the thing that's so great about him is he's been in tons of movies that you've seen, but you don't know because he always he never draws too much attention to himself. Like he totally services that role perfectly. And then moves on to the next project. So wow. I'm I'm a real fan of his. He he passed away a few years ago. He was one of the best. Um, um, Alan Rickman I, I like a lot. Okay. Um, uh, actresses I, I I fucking love Tilda Swinton. I mean she's yeah. never not interesting. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's she's amazing. Uh, I like Elizabeth Moss a lot. Um, I think she's great. Uh, so yeah, uh, that there. I mean, there's always people to look up to and learn from, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's an interesting point that you make as far as, especially with saying acting or something, even in the film industry. But having you know actors or, or or people that take on these roles and take on something, and you know, not with the intent of drawing all the attention and having everything about me, but more so about the character or about the material. Uh, you know, yeah. there are certainly, I, I think, people that you, you bring up. I'm trying to think of his name now. Uh, have you ever seen District 9? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, Charlto... he was. I, I, I'm try... Yes, 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 yes. I can't yeah, think yeah, what his, his full yeah. name is. He very much reminds me of that type where, you know, it's he might even be a lead in the role, but it's more so concentrated on what it is that, you know, he's doing and making sure that he's bringing what he has to, you know, and uh, sure, that, that, sure. that's, a, that's a good point. And I like that approach too, definitely. Like Danny McBride, like, yeah, I mean, he, he is always hilarious, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it's always like the perfect size for what that part is in the movie, you know, so... Right. Yeah, there's a there's a, a lot of uh, I, I I end up liking more character actors than I do like movie stars, I guess. Oh yeah, or yeah. leading actors, you know. Nice, nice. The the art of it, I, I I like that, definitely. Yeah. So as far as when when you you get uh you get the role of Peck, you get you know uh, signed on with Uncle Peckerhead here. Tell us about you know the first days on set and uh you know as far as what kind of went into the process there, uh, you know, when, you know, what, what were some things that you brought sure. in prepping for this role? So, uh, yeah, we, uh, well, the very first thing, uh, you know, was the casting process, but then, um, after I was cast, then we had maybe two weeks or no, it was probably more like a month before we shot. I, I went to Albany to uh, meet Jared, who was our effects person, and get uh, all the prosthetic stuff done uh, mm -hmm. to my head. And that was a first, uh, having to like breathe through the straws and all that. Um, in terms <laughs> of, uh, once we were on set, um, everybody started a little bit before me. Okay. So <clears throat> I got there I think I got there on the first day of filming, but it was late in the day and they'd already been working. Uh, Matt was really smart. He gave us all these kind of character bios uh, that we, he wanted us to, to use, but not share with anybody. Oh, okay. um, so I kind of had these relationships in my head already, but then like, I'd say within certainly by the second day, but I, I almost feel like within the first hour, there was just like a lot of chemistry between the four of us. And then as new people, as we went on and new people came in, uh, we would just like, you know, hug them into the fold. And um, yeah, it was a blast. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. We, uh, we, uh, uh, kind of dialogue heavy, driving heavy. We did that stuff first. 
and then we did all the gore last. And so it, it was oh, fun okay. because uh, w we had the adrenaline going because we were first starting, even though the scenes weren't like very adrenaline inducing. And then towards the end, when we're running out of steam and we're all exhausted, then we have these like crazy batshit ripping off people's heads kind of scenes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we were all like, fuck yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so. <laughs> now you were, you were doing something shortly before that kind of connected this character uh, that you had already brought a familiarity with it, right? Correct? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I was, when, when the casting notice went out, I was down in Florida doing a play. Um, and it was another Southern character. So okay. uh, I had already kind of been working on the accent. The accent's a little different from the, in the play than the movie. I slowed it down a oh. lot in the movie. Okay. Just because, uh, you know, he's just kind of, that's just kind of how he is. You know, he's just <laughs> like, well, it's actually based on a real person in my family who talks exactly like that, who, who is very slow. <laughs> and nods his head a lot and uh everything is like multiple syllables every time he says hello to me it's like well hi david, hey, david. <laughs> oh my god so that's yeah awesome yeah I, I, and and i mean that that's fun too having uh you know having that opportunity to kind of step out and uh you know so it was it was a little bit of something that was almost familiar but you still had work and had some adjustments that you're doing specifically for this character yeah yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, it was a, it was a totally different character. The first, uh, the play was about like this bitter old uh, um, coal miner who's trapped in a in a mine collapse. Oh, and it okay. was just like there was no intermission. It was just like an hour and a half of me just like with a broken leg trapped in a mine, you know, losing my <laughs> shit. And okay. uh, so tonally, they could not have been more different. But yeah, there's a yeah. little bit of a through line of, uh, yeah. Of the okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, in in the movie, there, there's there's a line that Peck explains uh, humans taste, and some taste like dog shit, and some taste like watermelon sherbet. I wanted to ask you, in your personal tastes, in real life, David Littleton, what are what are some foods that you know are just dog shit, and some that are that are that are watermelon sherbet? What are things well, that you I, don't I, like I, and things I, that you do? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I am a huge ice cream fan, so I, I even make ice cream. So uh, I oh, damn, fucking okay. love, yeah, yeah, I fucking love ice cream. I love, I have a, a bad, bad sweet tooth. And uh, what else do I love? Uh, I love Italian. I love Indian food. I love um, uh, Mexican food. I mean, I grew up in Texas, so. Yeah, I had a lot okay. of Tex Mex growing up, and then stuff that I I have a lot of weird, like I do not like mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. I hate the <laughs> idea of them. I hate the taste of them. Like I don't want to eat fungus, you know. So yeah. so keep your mushrooms. Uh, yeah. Broccoli. I hate broccoli. I hate the taste of it. Ooh. I kind of like the idea of it because I know it's so healthy and it's it's almost like, oh, I'm eating a little tree, you know, but I just hate, <laughs> yeah. I hate the taste of it. Uh, were these things else? that were forced when you were young? That you, you no, had to eat oh. a whole plateful before you were, you were able, able to leave the table? I mean, I had a, a couple of those instances. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I, had, I had one that, that my mom was like, you are not getting up until you... And I, and this was when I was pretty young and I'm like crying and I'm just like, I'm not gonna eat it, I'm never gonna eat it. Yeah. And then finally they all left and the dog was there. And so I gave it to the dog and yeah. then I hear them and the dog's like, <laughs> you know, just getting it all, dro all drooly and shit. Yeah. And then they come back in and I put it back in my plate and, and they sit down and they say, I'm not leaving this table until you eat that all. And so then I'm really crying because oh. I'm eating all those like dog drool. And, <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was the worst. But uh, another another weird one is seafood. I, I'm not a big fan of seafood. Oh. Man, like seafood, <laughs> seafood to me, I don't I don't like the taste of it. And again, I don't like the idea of it. Like seafood to me is mostly bugs that just happen to live in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so, like shrimp oh, are okay. bugs. Okay. Shrimp or bugs. <laughs> this is not supposed to be edible. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> oh shit! I mean, I, I I don't I don't mind some of that stuff. Uh, I can certainly say the plate of whatever that you had to eat with the dog slobber is fucking gross. <laughs> yeah, that that, yeah, is, was that is rough. I can imagine that wasn't something that you ever wanted to eat again uh, later on no. in life. No, oh, my God. All right. So as far as uh, I wanted to dig into, you had mentioned uh, you, the, a first time with prosthetics and with with makeup. I wanted to dig in a little bit of that process and. Uh, you know, how did that go? Was it, you know, a, a long day of having to put that on? Did you have different yeah. ideas that they, they did before they landed on what was in the film? Yeah, well, uh, so when I f first went and uh, to Albany and, and met Jared and sat for the uh, casting in my face and all of that, I was unshaved. And he hadn't seen me. I'm about to lose my hair. Uh, so we were just mentioning, uh, we were just talking on uh, the makeup and the, the process as far as uh, what went into all that. Right, right, right. So uh, I, I went to sit for Jared in the casting of the facial prosthetics and um, the teeth and all of that. Um, and then uh, we, uh, and then we, we got to set and I had this beard and I, you know, I've been clean shaven. So he, he definitely had to kind of uh, modify it to an extent. But the, the first time I was in the chair, it probably took about two and a half hours for the face stuff, the contacts, the, the teeth, the, um, the, the nails, the claws. Um, <laughs> but the more we did it, um, we got faster at it. We probably got to a point where we could do it in like an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, okay. The worst thing, uh, like I didn't mind the prosthetics at all. Um, and, it to and it does like add something to the performance. I mean, when you look in the mirror and you look like that, like it's much easier to be a badass than you, when you look in the mirror <laughs> like, the way I look now. Um, but uh, the nails, the, he, he really wanted to protect my nails. And so he used this kind of like very safe glue but what that meant was, like, the second it touched liquid, um, they would be uh, falling off and disappearing into carcasses. Yeah. And, you know, like, uh, <laughs> the, there'd be time I'd be scratching on people or, you know, doing this or, and, and those, and we'd all have to, like, stop when we cut, find the nail, because we only had two sets. You know, we were very low budget. <laughs> so we only had two sets of nails. And so, you know, halt production, find the nail that went flinging off, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was the best. The nails, the nails were the most difficult part. I, I do not, um, I, I'm glad I don't have to worry about having nails all the time. <laughs> I, I, I give it up to all women who have perfectly manicured nails. I cannot, I cannot. <laughs> How, how many how many days of, of shooting was there as far as the, the 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 points that you were in makeup probably i want to say like four or five and then oh okay <clears throat> yeah we and we shot our our heaviest um i think we did the the spoiler alert we did the um the killing of the um rival band like maybe the next to the last day and then the okay. uh metalheads in the parking lot was the very last day of shooting <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. The, uh, that was what a mess last. that was <laughs> oh, man. It, yeah. it was so much fun to shoot it was one of the very last things we shot and, and may have been the final official shot and we only had like one go of it because it was like oh, there was only okay. one, there was only one prosthetic head. There was only one, you know, uh, yeah. So we had to get it in one take, and miraculously we did. But it was so much fun because, you know, people had wrapped and people, you know, were starting to clean up and everything. The people who weren't involved, but when we like we rehearsed it a bunch of times to get everything right, the angles and and you know, it just worked out that the camera guys were perfect, that the, the guy who, who, um, 
led up to it. You know, his acting was perfect. Um, and, and we were able to nail it. But yeah, uh, that, that was a blast. And everyone was just out of camera range, you know, just like either looking at the monitor or looking at the actual action, just kind of holding their breath, hoping it would happen the way it was supposed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We don't have another opportunity. Let's please get this That's right. right. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Now, in in your preparation for the role, I mean, and ha it's one thing having something that you're, you know, having a character and maybe a background, but did you have anything as far as your preparation for the aspect of, you know, becoming the demon and becoming the monster? Did you have different you know, things that funny. were inspirations? Um, I, I kept meaning to, I mean, Matt was really thinly stretched and I kept trying to like pin him down, like how scary, like how, what, <laughs> what noise does he make? You know, how scary are we going to make him? And, and we just kind of shot it. You know, there, to be honest, oh, okay. I thought about it a lot, but when it just came to, to, you know, we had very limited time um, and it was time to shoot the monster and Matt was just like, go. And then he, and then as we're going, he started to like, give me like little notes as to like, enjoy it more, like laugh. Laugh yeah is okay killing this guy like you know yeah so okay yeah there's uh, a lot of mental preparation but yeah you know and, and i think i think it's maybe not even necessarily intentionally but uh, going along, you know, with, with us talking, you know, some of the less is more and some of the things, you know, like but with with earlier horror films, the scene when Chet looks out the window and sees you and you're just there, that was legitimately fucking creepy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just remember watching this and like it completely took me out. I mean, hair on my arm standing up like, holy oh. shit. And I think cool. it was one of those things where it was like, was not expecting it. You know, it, it, you, you obviously have a monster and it's scary, the situations that are happening, but like that pops up and it's almost like a American werewolf in London or like Halloween, like this thing's just yeah. fucking sitting there. I was like, right, holy right. shit. And, and, and you just wonder like, what the fuck is he thinking? Like, is, yeah, he, yeah. is he enjoying watching this? Is he thinking about eating them? You know, like what is yeah. going through his head? Cause it's just like so still and like into it, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, multiple reasons. But that was definitely yeah. one thing with, uh, you know, with, I, I mean, with it mostly, you know, obviously being lighthearted and fun. And, you know, that was like one of the scenes that really stood out. That I was like, oh, shit, oh, I was not expecting that, you know, and I, I, I love that for sure. That was good. Cool. Um, now, as far as the different themes with 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 balance i wanted to touch on that a little bit and you know and some of the the humor and horror uh you've mentioned a little bit too but your your you know your interest in 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 horror movies that have you know uh humor humorous themes you know what were what were some things that that were that were favorites you know along the lines of of comedy horror movies well i, I love you just mentioned it i love american werewolf in london um, yeah because uh, it's just so genuinely funny and it's funny like in the right ways it's not like throw shit yeah. at the wall and see what lands funny yeah. It, yeah. All comes, yeah it all comes from the character stuff like that yeah. Griffin Dunn is so great in that movie um, <laughs> yeah. what else uh, Tucker and Dale is a lot Ooh. of fun yeah okay uh, what else uh the cabin in the woods uh so good again, I, i'm gonna say it again just because uh it doesn't get enough love the loved ones the loved ones i know i'm gonna have to go back actually i have it i own it i'm looking at my collection i have it over there and i yeah that's gonna be one i'm gonna have to dig back out because it's been a little while watching that so yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll have to now you you mentioned an american world have you ever seen schlock do you remember that one schlock yeah, no, John John Landis it. John Landis directed it. Who made American oh. Werewolf? I think it was his first movie, or at least it was his movie right before American Werewolf in London. But it was this town that thinks that they see a Bigfoot, and uh -huh. it's just very like air, airplane meets kind of a horror movie. Just the oh, stupidest humor that you can you can think of, but I'll check hilarious. It out. I, yeah, I just thought of another one: Brain Dead or Dead Alive. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> as ridiculous saw, as it is gross when it came out at a theater in the village oh, and <clears throat> i mean that movie was made to to be seen with an audience <laughs> yeah. 
I yeah. mean, that lawnmower, it, it was just gold. <laughs> it was absolute gold. I, I imagine scenes like, you know, seeing something as ridiculous as when, like, the pimple pops and it goes into the porridge or whatever. Uh-huh. I imagine seeing stuff like that with a group of people and just the disgust Jeez, that yeah. waves through the crowd. Or the tail? <laughs> the, the tail? Kind of, uh, yeah. She's, like, slurping up the dog's tail. So yeah, gross, it, yeah. It was so, so, so good. Oh, okay, so so digging in uh, with, with Uncle Peckerhead along the lines of these things were there were there certain moments or scenes in you know reading the script and being familiar with it there that were funny but then seeing it actually on film or seeing the playback of it you're like oh that turned out better than what i thought it would have yeah well i mean we had so much fun making it and Mm -hmm. we were all just like laughing our asses off as we were doing it yeah um but um I don't, yeah, I mean, like Ryan um, Ryan Conrath, who plays uh, the lead singer of Dominion Rising, Shiloh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, his name is Shiloh. Um, <laughs> like he, when when we were filming, he had us like in stitches, and he and Jeff Riddle are buddies, and they would start to just like go back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> And I would be laughing to the point where I was like almost crying, you know. And he's got that big nose ring and a cohawk and everything. And yeah. but what, when you watch him do that emo screamo kind of song that he does, it, yeah. it is probably just as funny as, <laughs> as when we were making it. So, but yeah, there, there, there are definitely things, and there are things that I wasn't around for, you know things with the band before I entered the scene, you know, that, that I didn't get to see shot or, um, so yeah, I, I definitely, <clears throat> the first time I saw it, um, which was at Matt's house, um, I was just like, wow, we kind of made a movie. Oh uh, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everything being kind of a fun, you know, like new experience and uh, a little bit of a surprise there. Yeah. I love that. Nice, nice. Uh, last, last up here, I wanted to ask as far as, did you get to keep anything from set or was there anything that you, you wish that you would have held on to from the, from the making of this movie? No, no I, I wanted to keep some of the clothes or, uh, but no, but hold on. I just thought of something that I do. Have. I'll have a link on my page as well. Oh, oh. man. So it's the, um, it's the cast of my face, and then one of the Uncle Peckerhead. <laughs> so I did get to keep that. That is so cool. It's awesome, right? God, that is so cool. So with with that, because you had the beard, did they have to take off just the bottom? Yeah, half? yeah, that's exactly what they did. Like there was okay. You can see there was a. It's funny. He originally had this kind of testicular chin. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ball sack chin uh, <laughs> to make him even more of a pecker head, I guess. <laughs> oh my lord, that is absolutely hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing. That's so so cool. And what a yeah. what a cool thing to you know be able to hold on to too. Um, and you know this is this is wrapping up on uh, you know on our, our interview. I still have one finale, but. Um, this is your opportunity if you want to let people know, you know, what you have going on, maybe some things coming up. Not, I don't want to ding, you know, too far and anything you're yeah, not supposed yeah, to be yeah. saying. No, but. Um, I, you know, I'm shooting something tomorrow, um, a TV show, uh, but I, I can't talk about it. Um, nice. It's a, I signed an NDA. Um, yep. But, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, just auditioning. Things are just now kind of, like, starting to perk up again. Uh uh, hoping to work with Matt again on some, some things. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. We nice. See. Nice. Keep your awesome. eyes peeled. <laughs> awesome. You know, I, I, I have to say too, I'm really excited to see the stuff that you have coming. Uh, this was my first experience in my introduction to your work and it was, it was so fun. You know, it was such a refreshing thing, especially for horror. I, I feel like some things kind of fall into paths of just being, you know, 
just another thing. And this was so different and so fun. I absolutely, and myself being in a band as well, you know, it was just, oh, cool. this, it, it was yeah. a, it was a true ride. So I oh, really great. appreciated all this and, so, and seeing a movie that kind of spells out really what happens if you take some trips or take a tour with a band. So many yeah. moments, you know, when I talk to, talk to Matt, I'm going to have to go over too. Cause I'm like, boy, you hit some of the shit yeah, on the head. <laughs> we keep hearing over and over from musicians like, yeah, that's happened to me. That's, that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> that, that douchey Shiloh guy. I, I yeah. tell you, he seems to be fucking everywhere. <laughs> right. That's what everybody says. Everybody knows a Shiloh and everybody knows a, a promoter who's going to pay you $3 for yeah. three hours work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or i mean even in the beginning when chet wants to you know give the, the the demo or whatever and he's like you need to get out of my face right now or you know calls and says you know call me on monday and it's like no no sooner i'm gonna hang up you know so, right, uh, right we've been yeah. there <laughs> so let, let me so this is for the finale i wanted to you know dig into have a little fun here uh you know and this is a hypothetical thing so say Something were to come, and, and Matt and the gang comes back, and they make a uh, uh, Uncle Peckerhead too. And hypothetically, the story you know goes along that the the band falls into a situation that they need a new singer, and it ends up being old Peck. What what singer or vocalist from any metal band or 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 band ever would you want to have synced uh, in with your voice? Who would you want your voice to be when you're up on that stage? Maybe Iggy Pop or... Ooh, that's a good one. Man, that's a good one. Or Joe Strummer. Oh, uh, totally. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, who's got a really great... I, I, Iggy Pop with that, with the, the rawness and the attitude. Yeah, that's I what think I'm that's thinking. A, that's that's, a, that's thinking. a good um, answer. Really good answer. Yeah. Or would you that. be up for it? Would you would you sing? Would that be something that you would be in your wheelhouse or would you be like, uh, I don't think yeah, it's me. I think I'm past my my prime. <laughs> and, uh, I just took back that. up acting. I mean, I, don't I, push me over there. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do it. yeah, I mean I would I'd be up for trying it, but I yeah. I I'd, I'd leave that to the professionals. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, or uh maybe Johnny Rotten. Ooh, man. That's a good one too. Shoot. Yeah, I, I, that'd be that'd be that'd be cool. You know, I, I certainly that would be a that'd be a fun situation. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, I, I either way, uh, I wanted to say, honestly, thank you very, very much for your time today. It's been absolutely. cool. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, as, you as well. You as well. I've been enjoying the movie. And even recently, I went back and kept on watching it a couple of times to pick up on different things, too. And uh, yeah, a lot cool. a lot of fun. And it was really, really, really cool to to have that so thank you very much oh, well, thank and hopefully you. they thank get those so t-shirts back up yeah, that's, that's the only up. complaint i got there, there are new ones there are new ones up now they do they have more on yeah there there's uh i think some of them are different designs and and you know jeff is also working on the album like the album is yeah and yeah it's being, it's being mastered or whatever they do with that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That that'll be sweet. I didn't know if there was new T-shirts, so I heard that they were that the uh, that Jeff was recording the soundtrack, but I didn't know uh, what was the yeah, update yeah. with that. In fact, I, I'm I ordered two. I'm I'm expecting them. There's oh, yeah, there are a couple of new damn. designs. I think they're still out of the black, duh, white. You know, duh in uh, white print. Yeah, they have like a a cool Japanese kind of three D duh one. They've got. Oh, uh, man. One with the picture of the band. Yeah, visit the site. Visit unclepeckerhead.com for all your nice. peckerhead for all your <laughs> peckerhead swag. <laughs> nice. Awesome. That's where I'm going to head right after this. Yeah, certainly. All right. I, I can't wait. Awesome. So cool. Well, look, thank you very, very much. This has been an honor, man. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. And, sure, it was a pleasure. Uh, good luck. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Lo-Fi Horror Guy. I do David Littleton. You guys take care. Stay safe, man. All right. He's a lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, he's kind of a guy, but he is so lo-fi, lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, lo-fi horror guy has been recorded in front of a live studio audience.